good afternoon to all the respected jury members and other attendees uh, i am trishit chandra uh, from nit kurukshetra currently pursuing mtech in structural engineering and my group number is m09 and the today's presentation topic is design of steel intensive quarantine center building for covid 19 uh, so shall i start sir yes please okay okay so the flow of the presentation is like this uh, after the introduction the input data uh, that has been given in the problem statement uh, and then the concept and modifications for the structural modeling and the corresponding loadings and analysis results that has been carried out and the design of members connections and foundation and lastly uh, with the conclusions of bill of, bill of quantity so to begin with uh, it is worth mentioning that covid 19 has has pushed uh, us uh, to our boundaries and our daily lives has been toppled uh, with the conscious effort to maintain the precautionary measures and one of the major uh, precautionary measure is the maintaining the physical distancing so quarantine centers is one of those major uh, infrastructural facilities uh, that actually isolates the patients or the affected ones from the unaffected ones and therefore the safe and rapid construction uh, is the urge of the situation for faster accessibility of this isolation and in that part uh, civil engineers actually play the role as a bridge to provide that facility or the quarantine center to prevent the spreading and so begin with that uh, the input data for the current uh, design of the quarantine center has been like the plan area of 35 meter by 50 meter site location of kolkata and the eaves height is 7 uh, meter uh, like this one and the central column height that has been taken for this particular design is 10 uh, meter and the whole uh, building is actually naturally ventilated and the column spacing the minimum column spacing is 10 meter in uh, z direction and in x direction it is in 17.5 meter uh, spacing and the foundation is used as a trapezoidal isolated footing with pedestal with a m25 grade of concrete and ac415 grade of uh, reinforcing uh, steel bar and the structural steel grade is taken as ac410 or e25 which is a mild steel and for the roof and cladding uh, the galvanized color coated sheets uh, of uh, 2 mm thickness is used and the safe bearing of the soil a uh, safe bearing capacity of the soil is taken or provided as uh, 200 kPa so continuing with this the main concept of the present uh, the design of the quarantine center is actually the base of the is actually the base taken from the concept of 3d stadium roof which we can see from here which is actually a 3d roof truss so in case uh, why this 3d roof truss is taken because whenever i was designing with a methodological or iterative process i have seen that uh, in case of 2d roof truss the conventional 2d roof truss the deflection was coming has huge and 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 correspondingly the height of the mid portion the height of the mid elevation rise is coming very large so that is why i decided to go with the 3d roof truss and with a small curvature for the uh, arch section the small uh, curvature that has been produced we can see here uh, that is why the eave column is of 7 meter and the central column is of 10 meter so that is how the small curvature is introduced and middle column is actually provided uh, to reduce the size and volume of the truss element so that the truss whole truss uh, the weight of the whole truss get reduced and it is uh, readily uh, transported or erected uh, very easily and also assembled very easily so that is the main fundamental thing of the concept and the modifications and by the modifications what what i actually meant by that is uh, the structural modeling which i submitted to the jury member previously i have made a slight uh, modification in that part uh, the submitted in the submitted part i used this whole roof truss as uh, the structural modeling of uh, angle section i provided angle section for this roof truss which we can see here this is the part uh, the angle sections and now after uh, the submission i was going through that and uh, working with that and then i saw that providing pipe sections instead of uh, angle sections actually reduce the uh, weight of the whole roof truss by 50% and correspondingly uh, the column sections and footing dimensions get reduced 
and so we can uh, also deduce that uh, the co cost of the material will also get reduced but uh, and also there is a uh, another advantage is that uh, while using this pipe sections of lesser dimension the strength to wet ratio is significantly increased because the strength criteria is uh, slightly compromised but the wet criteria is significantly reduced so that is why the strength to wet ratio is increased significantly and in case of this 3D root truss, if we use the pipe sections, the simpler ball joint connections can be used, which is uh, which will make the ease of connection design and also the construction assembly. So coming to the structural modeling uh, for the column sections, according to IS 808-1989, I have used ISHB 300 at the rate of 576 uh, Newton per meter. So and for plinth level beams, uh, for the cladding actually, these plinth level beams are used uh, for the cladding of the uh, to connect the cladding with these beams at the bottom and that is used uh, for uh, as uh, angle section of uh, 150 by 150 by 10 and for the diagonal bracings of the structure to resist the lateral sway is used as double angle uh, 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 of uh, is uh, 150 by 150 by 16 and for the roof truss members this is actually the provisions uh, or the specifications from Tata structure that is taken in STAD Pro uh, and also the cladding uh, 2mm thick galvanized color coated the steel pipes of this dimension is used for the modeling. So this is actually the uh, structural modeling parts we can see here this is the outer or the eave uh, elevation of the uh, structure uh, uh, eave bay outer bay of the uh, structural model and this is the 50 meter span, uh, uh, 10 meter spacing of different columns and the diagonal bracings at the uh, ends of the ends bay. So that is the outer bay. This is the inner bay where the 10 meter column is can be seen and there is no plinth level beam. This is actually the plinth level beam for the uh, cladding to connect the cladding in that part. And these are the dimensions that has been given. This is the 50 meter span and this is the 35 meter span of the front elevation. So this is our eave, these are two eave columns and this is actually the central column and this is the uh, roof truss where the elevation of the roof truss is uh, kept within 1.5 meter uh, for the uh, whole uh, elevation. So this is actually the modeling and in, in this uh, whole modeling, in this uh, coated modeling we can see these openings are actually kept uh, for the natural ventilations and that is at the level of 8.5 meter. So the, any uh, wind or any kinds of thing that, that is provided at the opposite uh, ends of this direction. There is no opening in this direction or in this direction. So only the wind criteria uh, for the load analysis is taken that the uplift uh, criteria for wind will only be considered when the wind is uh, open, uh, going through this openings in one direction. So that is the main criteria. And coming to this loading, uh, we have actually considered dead load, live load, temperature load, uh, wind load, and then seismic load and combination and erection load. So uh, in, uh, in, 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 in all of these loads are not taken directly or are not taken uh, with the combination together. Uh, what we have did that we take the model for two different loading conditions, uh, the whole structural model for two different loading conditions, that is one, with dead load, life load, temperature load, and wind load, and their combination, that is one part. And another part is uh, uh, the, the wind load is just replaced with the seismic load. Because uh, we know that uh, from the uh, our IS provisions that wind load and seismic load cannot be uh, put together. Uh, so that is why two different combinations are taken. And this erection load is only provided to this truss structure that we can see. And these four points are taken as the support, uh, which we can take as the chain support for, for the lifting part of the by the cranes. So that is actually uh, subjected to the erection load. The whole section is not uh, subjected to the erection load. Uh, it's obvious. And now this dead load is the self weight of all the members, which is automatically calculated by the software. And the live load is calculated according to the IS 875 part two which where the table two we can see here this is the table two for flat sloping or curved roof with uh, less than 10 degree slope uh, and in uh, our structural model this slope is 9.5 degree nearly 9.5 degree so for that the access is not provided except for maintenance we, we have taken 0.75 kilonewton per meter square at the roof as a live load 
and the temperature load is given in the uh, instag uh, problem statement that uh, total variation of 15 degree centigrade should be considered so plus minus 7.5 uh, degree centigrade variation has been taken and it is only taken for the axial variation not uh, for uh, sideways variations and the wind load uh, as mentioned for the kolkata uh, site location uh, is taken for the basic wind speed given by the is 875 part 3 as 50 meter per second and the terrain category uh, of uh, 3 which is uh, mentioning that uh, uh, various smaller uh, heights of buildings up to 10 meters and few taller uh, buildings which we, which we can use for the kolkata uh, site location and partly open in one direction as we have mentioned that ventilation is provided in one direction which is in this direction is x direction and wind pressure amplification is taken as 1.2 this is not any kind of provision this is for the safety criteria we have just taken 20 percent extra uh, wind pressure so similarly uh, in seismic load conditions according to the is 1893 part 1 and 4 if we see the part 1 where the zone factor provision is given for kolkata we can see that kolkata actually lies in the zone 3 but uh, it is uh, good that uh, I, I, I thought that it is good if uh, because of this Kolkata is at the vicinity of the border of two different zones, it is good that we choose the highest zone. So that is why I have taken this zone 4 uh, of 0.24 uh, uh, parameter and importance factor and response reduction factor of 1.5 and 5 respectively is taken according to the part 4, I said in 93 part 4. And the soil type is taken as medium stiff uh, because there is no hard soil, I think. And, and, and because the Ganges or the alluvial criteria, Indo-Gangetic plain, uh, there is alluvial soil. So it can be soft or medium. So Kolkata is uh, uh, not at the vicinity of, uh, is not, uh, not uh, if we can see that. Uh, so the soft and medium, we, we choose the medium criteria. And taking the combinations according to the IS 875 part 5 and corresponding to the wind code and seismic code, all the factor of safety uh, with the 30 different combinations have been performed with uh, limit set of collapse and serviceability uh, combinations. And, the, and to consider the lateral, uh, to consider the diagonal action of these lateral forces, we just combine this and X direction and Z directional pressure. Uh, with SRSS, which is nothing but like a Pythagoras theorem, uh, and to get the uh, wind uh, pressure from the diagonal direction. That one uh, uh, combination is also taken. And the erection load is only performed for the entire roof with its only dead load. And four points of contact of chain, which we uh, will be used for the lifting portion, that has been considered. So now coming to the analysis part, wind versus earthquake, in this analysis result, uh, we can see actually that there is very slight difference between the responses. But uh, in if we uh, choose any one of them, then wind load criteria is more, uh, will be more uh, efficient because it is slightly higher. So that is why all the criteria, all the analysis response is taken uh, from the wind load criteria. And uh, we can see from here that, uh, these nodal deflections are actually the maximum criteria in different directions and these are global coordinate system so in this global coordinate system this is x z and y and this in this local coordinate system uh, we consider the x as a longitudinal direction z as this and y as this so that is why the member forces are according to this local coordinate system so fx means compressive or tensile which is axial fz uh, fz is uh, shear minor fy is shear major and mz is uh, bending major and my is bending minor so all of this data has been uh, obtained for the design uh, combinations and what we did actually uh, all the critical load combinations for each member typology is considered for the design which means so let's say uh, for this case if uh, the wind is coming from this direction and this direction the critical combination only occurs for this corner column and the vicinity uh, and the vicinity uh, column of this nearby column of this so we just actually taken two direction of the wind and for that these two color columns has uh, obtained as a critical uh, members so we just design all the columns all the perimeter columns according to this uh, design of this uh, critical columns because wind can come from the other directions also and then this uh, critical situation stress reversal criteria uh, can occur and also for the inner columns, we have done uh, this uh, 
we have done this and for the diagonal bracing plinth level and roof truss uh, this criteria has been taken and for the roof truss erection it can be seen that this is the erection load in case of the erection load uh, the nodal deflection is coming uh, which is uh, 3 10 and 1 mm which is uh, one third of the nodal deflection uh, in the whole truss when considered in the whole truss so these uh, sections are all uh, lesser very much lesser than the actual structure so these can be withstood by the structural members if we design for the wind load and uh, response so that is how uh, these erection loads are considered and from here one thing we can notice here that as all the roof truss members are axial or two two force members the compressive and tensile uh, axial forces are significantly larger than the other load this we have not taken all the joints as pin joints because ideally uh, in real life no joints are pin jointed uh, some fixity uh, is introduced due to the connections uh, with gusset plates and any other things so that is how we consider that uh, the real life situation and we see that the joint the, the shear and bending at the joints are very much lesser compared to the axial criteria so that is the thing and coming to the design of the members uh, for the column sections we have designed for separate uh, for individual criteria the first criteria we have designed for the combined axial compression with the biaxial bending which comes out to be the critical uh, design for the column and the axial tension and biaxial bending this axial tension is actually considered while uh, considering the uplifting criteria of the uh, due to the wind pressure so that is how this axial tension with biaxial bending comes into picture and it is also designed for the shear and check taken slenderness and deflection and all the uh, aspects are uh, safe uh, with this ishb 300 um, uh, cases and the column sections comes out to be plastic section class and this column sections actually ishb what we have chosen are uh, actually the modified uh, version of two different portions at first i used ismb and uh, i see i have seen that uh, in case of this large columns in large plan areas ISMBs are not significantly performing very well with comparison to ISHB and um, the submitted which I have actually submitted to the jury before I have used ISHB 300 at the rate 618 newton per meter with extra 10 mm cover plate because at that time the truss members are uh, designed with angle sections and that is why they were uh, two times heavier uh, compared to the present uh, scenario. and that is why this extra uh, 10 mm cover plate was needed but now this uh, 10 mm cover plate is not needed and even the uh, ishb section 300 uh, has been reduced because the web section is reduced and that is why this weight of the ishb is reduced so that is how we have uh, come up with this column section of the design and coming to this plinth level beams uh, we have designed for axial tension and biaxial bending Uh, that is the case combined of this and this is coming out to be the critical situation along with the slenderness criteria and we have also designed for the shear and check for the deflection criteria this plinth level beams are coming out to be the compact sections and these are actually as mentioned earlier that uh, provided uh, for the design uh, support the uh, connection of the claddings coming to the diagonal bracings the diagonal bracings are actually designed for the combined axial compression and biaxial bending and combined axial tension with torsion which is the critical scenario and th this is this scenario actually comes out to be more critical in case of the lateral uh, wind load with 1.7 uh, when we use the factor of safety of 1.7 that is the criteria when it is come out to be the critical and it is also designed for shear and that is that is very much uh, minimum actually that is why it is uh, performed well and uh, these sections are actually provided to resist the excessive lateral sway and these sections are also uh, uh, comes out to be the plastic sections and checked against the slenderness and deflection ratio and in this diagonal bracings uh, one uh, thing that i have noticed uh, and that that is, that is uh, very major to me actually that uh, while producing uh, not double angle when i was using single angle sections of isa 150 by 150 by 16 uh, the torsion response were coming critical and after studying uh, in more depth i found out that because of the asymmetry of the member and due to the shear center uh, from the two different uh, uh, axes this torsional response is coming out to be very critical and it is coming to and 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 the uh, section is always uh, coming to be failed 
So that is how when I provided this double angle, one axis uh, uh, with respect to one axis, the structure, uh, the model, the member became uh, symmetric. And that is how the shear center is only coming out to be uh, with respect to another uh, other uh, axis, which is the unsymmetric part. And that is how this torsional criteria has been reduced Trishik. and resisted by Trishik, yes, you, yes, sir. Your time is already. Uh, okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, just na, quickly... the start a little okay. bit early. Okay, okay ma'am. Now, uh, so the connections we can see we have used this ball jointed connections for the roof uh, members and for the uh, plinth uh, other members we have used gusset plates and boltings. And uh, coming to the foundations, these are the foundations where we have used this plate of 500 by 500 by 22 mm. And uh, this welding of 9 mm and 6 mm is used, the pedestal of 600 by 600 mm. And 16 anchor bolts for the uplifting criteria of 18, 15 mm uh, the size has been used uh, to resist that uplifting criteria. And uh, from here, we actually provided all the uh, criteria that design of foundations. These coming out to be the, for the perimeter columns, the. Uh, the dimension of the footing was 4 meter by 4 meter and for the inner perimeter inner columns it was 1.65 by 1.65 meter and the depth of uh, this footing is 1.2 1, 1 meter from the ground level and the height of the pedestal is 1.2 meter so coming out to be coming uh, coming to this bill of quantity uh, as we i have submitted previously it was mentioned that 78 lakhs approximately and these all the uh, market prices are obtained from the web. So they not maybe actually the very much uh, accurate with the actual prices, but these are approximate results. So according to that, I have checked that uh, using this uh, in the previous part, the cost has been reduced by 33% when we uh, replace the angle sections of the roof truss with the pipe section. So the major conclusion, conclusion that I have made from my uh, design of this structure that 3D roof truss is more effective in terms of strength and wet ratio, strength to wet ratio uh, with respect to 2D uh, roof truss. And ISHB sections are more efficient than ISMB for columns in large plan area. Double angle sections are more efficient than single angle sections when used in diagonal bracing. And pipe sections are more effective than angle sections in case of 3D roof truss members because it reduced, uh, for my design case, it reduced the wet by 50% and the total cost of the raw material reduced by 33%. So that is all. Thank you for be giving me the opportunity to become a part of Instag. Thank you.